During Major League Baseball's first several decades, names like Ruth, Cobb, and Gehrig turned the league into the heart of a national pastime. But in the segregationist America of the early 20th century, national was far more exclusive than it was inclusive. The big leagues were reserved for whites. An imaginary color line encircled every diamond in the majors, leaving black ball players left to play in so-called Negro leagues, where the money was scarce, but the talent was plentiful. Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, and Roy Campanella were just a few of the stars who'd bring the Negro Leagues to prominence in the 1930s. But the color line dividing them from the major leagues was notoriously stubborn, and it would take a man like Branch Rickey to finally snap it in half. In the mid-1940s, Rickey, the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, began making plans to recruit a player from the Negro Leagues, a decision that was met with plenty of raised eyebrows. I think that uh, being a very religious man the way that he was and uh, knowing that the black ball players could not play in, base, in, in Major League Baseball and professional baseball, I just think he wanted to do something about it. Ricky set his sights on Jackie Robinson, a shortstop with the Kansas City Monarchs, and in 1945 approached him with an offer. But that offer came with a condition, which resulted in a famous exchange between Ricky and Robinson, later portrayed in 1950s A Story of Jackie Robinson, with Robinson playing himself. Suppose I collide with you at second base, and when I get up, I say, you, you dirty black so-and-so. What do you do? Mr. Ricky, do you want a ball player who's afraid to fight back? I want a ball player with guts enough not to fight back. Robinson accepted the terms, and in 1946, suited up with the Dodgers farm team, the Montreal Royals. This is truly an historic day here in Jersey City. A 27-year-old Negro named Jackie Robinson is playing his first game for the Montreal Royals, the Dodger Farm Club. Robinson steps to the plate. Here's the pitch. Swing and long drive into deep left field. It might be home run, Jackie Robinson. Robinson thrived in Montreal. He was named the league's most valuable player, and with just days to go before the start of the 1947 season, he was signed to his first major league contract, debuting for the Brooklyn Dodgers on April 15, 1947. It was a day when somehow people knew, thoughtful people, educated people, hey, it's not just whites playing a game on a diamond anymore. Forget the architecture so regaled by baseball writers. Suddenly, it was a new beginning. The long-standing color line was finally broken. But being the first black major leaguer, Jackie quickly found himself the object of scorn, not only among fans, but among some of his own teammates as well. Many who petitioned against the very idea of Robinson wearing a big league uniform and I said, I don't know about any petition, but they tell me you got one up. And I don't know about any petition, but I'll tell you what you can do with it, because Robinson's gonna play on this ball club. Because I don't look at the color, I don't care whether he's green, black, yellow, white. He has talent. And he will put money in your pocket and my pocket. This is some kind of player. And he's gonna be here. And I'm warning you now that he's only the first of many to follow. Jackie was some kind of player. He won Rookie of the Year in 1947 and went on to have a Hall of Fame career. Jackie Robinson, runner at third base, takes his lead. And the Robinson's going to try to steal home. He is safe at home plate. Yogi Berra's going crazy. Barra thought he had him, but Jackie Robinson has stolen home. But more important than his play on the field was the attitude, the defiance, the courage he displayed in a world that wanted nothing to do with him, simply because of the color of his skin. April 15, 1947, wasn't just a turning point for Major League Baseball, it was a turning point for an entire country. <laughs> 